Just out of curiosity, for those of you learning Portuguese in Brazil, what does this mean? Leave me a comment below. It's never like a happy... It's always some sort of... Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the T-Max. I make videos about language, culture, and travel. And uh, since I've been learning Portuguese recently, I have been making a lot of notes about this language uh, and just crazy, fun, interesting things that I have observed about the language. And we're going to look at that today. First of all, I'd like to point out that there is an official Brazilian Portuguese organization, or at least a book called VOLP. And this dictionary maintains the Brazilian Portuguese evolution as the language evolves. So let's talk about pronunciation in Brazil. It is the most fluid and flexible thing, uh, which is cool when you speak it, but it sucks when you're learning it because you're like, am I saying this right or not? And you don't know because it, it is right and it's also not at the same time. This word, for example, cajo. I mean, based on the phonology of the word, it would be cajo. Oh, oh, but people will say kahu, and yeah, this could be just based on accent, but kahu, that pronunciation is accepted as a normal pronunciation, which is confusing to a new learner. Another example, GC, they have E at the end of a word. I've talked about this in other videos. I'm now just pronouncing it like E, even though it could be GC, depending on where you're from, and they're both correct. So you basically just pick a way to pronounce things and go with it. I guess you can mix and match too if you want. I mean, there's just so much flexibility here. So another fun aspect of pronunciation would be this consonant vocal sound that they have. In English, we have words that end with a hard consonant sound. And in Portuguese, in Brazil, you don't have that and you can't have that. So out of just force of habit, they'll add in a vocal sound that doesn't exist. Let's look at some examples. This word should be Etnia, right? Etnia. That's how we do in English. We we pronounce this, but you'll hear Brazilians say etnia, eti, etnia. They add in the e sound. They add in a vocal sound. Some other examples: advogado, hichimo, receptivo. And then looking at all the imported words, there's so much imported English here in Brazil. They would do the same thing with these imported English words. For example, nochibuki, bachiman, ketichupi. Objeto, capichurar. It's actually funny because they'll speak English or they'll say a word in English to an English speaker, assuming we know exactly what they mean. But if you say bachi man as a Batman, I have no idea what you're talking about, even though you're using my word. And since I've been here long enough, I'm starting to get over making Spanish errors. But there's a few that just been hanging on. The biggest one is actually the mais grande in Spanish, which does not exist in Portuguese. It's Mayor. You cannot say mais grande. And I keep saying that. I keep saying mais pequeno, mais grande. Because in Spanish you can say that and you can't in Portuguese. So stop doing that, Tim. Okay, okay, I got it. When I'm speaking quickly and I'm using possessives, the meo, minha, seu, sua, I just keep saying me or su. <laughs> because it's easier. And But there's actual words that I need to say in Portuguese. And then days of the week is. It's just so confusing. Who starts the first day with the second day? Segunda feira is the first work day of the week because domingo is the first day of the week. Fine, I get it, but like with evolution of work weeks, when we found out that Monday was now the first day of the week, they couldn't change it to primera feira. They could have, but they didn't want to because they wanted to confuse foreigners. I get it. Take that, gringos. Okay, and if you've been watching some of my other videos these next few segments, you'll have recognized from some other videos I did where, um, in this first segment where I'm going to talk about where Portuguese is the only language that is the way it is compared to the other languages I speak, specifically the Latin languages I speak. In Spanish, you have sencillo. In French, you have simple. In Italian, you have semplice. In English, you have simple. And then in Portuguese, it was like, we're going to use simple for the, for the singular. It's plural. For the plural, it's plural. In Spanish, piel de gallina. In French, cher de poule. In Italian, pelidoca. In English, goosebumps. And in Portuguese, ajepio. We're not going to use a bird, no? Okay. In Spanish, re reparar. In French, reparé. In Italian, riparare. 
in English, repair. In Portuguese, concertar. Spanish, vacaciones. French, vacances. Italian, vacanza. English, vacation. Portuguese, ferias. In Spanish, demasiado grande. In French, trop grand. In Italian, troppo grande. In English, too big. In Portuguese, grande demais. All the other ones had the adverb before, and Portuguese was like, nah, we'll put it after. And so, I've also found some examples where every language is completely different, despite all having Latin roots. Let's look at some of those. Spanish, porar. French, efase. Italian, cancelare. English, erase. Portuguese, apagar. Spanish, destornillador. French, tournevi. Italian, cachevite. English, screwdriver. Portuguese, chave de fenda. Spanish, helado. French, glass. Italian, gelato. English, ice cream. Portuguese, sorvete. Spanish, te toca a ti. French, se tatua. Italian, il suo turno. English, your turn. Portuguese, a sua vez. Spanish, sotono. French, suso. Italian, seminterato. English, basement. Portuguese, porão. And I don't know about you, but when I'm learning a foreign language and I hear an expression and then I translate it in my head to English and it's super weird, I think that's hilarious. And so I'm going to share some of those with you. Frango passarinho. You buy these in the store, it literally means chicken little bird. <laughs> and these refer to actually chicken wings. Deixa pra lá. This means literally to leave it for there or leave it over there. And this means either forget about it or don't worry about it. Fast tempo. This literally means it makes time. And this translates to it's been a while. So if you haven't seen somebody in a while, you can say, oh, fast tempo. Like it's been a while since we've seen each other. You can also use the word fast with a specific time to mean ago in English. So fast tres anos would be three years ago. Mangi vaca literally means cow hand, uh, which in English is a thing, it's a cowboy. And if you do some research on this, like I ended up doing, a cow hand was what they called white cowboys and cowboys, what they called black cowboys back way back in the day, because the word boy was derogatory or condescending. So they used it for just the black cowboys. And then at some point, everybody became cowboys. But cow hand, is also used today and it just means somebody who helps cowboys or who does the work of a cowboy. But in Brazilian Portuguese, this means somebody who's cheap. Diz que me disse. This literally means say what she or he, he or she told me. So basically you're repeating something somebody else told you. So this would be fofoca, which is another fun word. Uh, and this means gossip. Agua viva. And for those of you who know me, you know that I like SpongeBob and I learned this word from SpongeBob because he likes to hunt agua viva, which are not living waters, but they are jellyfish. Estar a finchi literally means to be at the end of something, but we use it when you want to say that you like something or you're into it or you fancy someone. So you can use this for people or things. If you have a crush on someone, you can use this expression as well. De uma hora para otra literally means from one hour to another hour and so you would think that this means like over a period of time but it actually means suddenly okay okay tang so this is not little john speaking portuguese like okay 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 it actually literally means what what it has if you did something wrong but you didn't perceive it and somebody's like hey what are you doing you're like what okay okay tang so if i'm going mal or hand, and you're going contra mal, against hand, we are going in different directions. So mal is the correct direction, and contra mal would be against the, the current, basically. Nui cru, or nua y crua, if you're going to be feminine, and basically this means naked and raw, is the translation, but you use it when you want to say, like, frankly, like, frankly speaking, quem me dera. This expression literally means who gives it to me. Basically, this is an expression you can say on its own, and it just means I hope so. And you can also use it in a sentence to express some sort of hope. Que me dera que, and then you get into subjunctive that I talked about in another video 
that's been uh, terrorizing me lately, but in a fun way. Oh, it hurts! Oh, it hurts! It hurts so bad! Novino in folia. So this literally means to be new in sheet, but it means to be brand new, which I guess if you reverse engineered that, why would a brand be new? What does that mean? Yeah, so expressions are strange. Gerard Gipes Juntos literally means to swear with your feet together, and it has some sort of historical context, like dating back to Europe, but it means to like swear on everything, maybe is what we'd say in English, like, oh, I swear on everything, I swear on my mom. It's just a way to swear, but at a higher level. Boneco Gineri is a snowman, or a doll of snow. It's nice. And this next part is just literally a list of words and expressions that I think are interesting that kind of don't exist in English, so I wanted to share them with you. You're welcome. Festa Americana. So when you hear that in Brazil, this is basically a BYOB party. So bring your own drinks. Uh, we'll, we'll probably make food, but you need to, if you want to drink, you need to bring your own drinks. And they call this an American party because they watch movies and in all of our college parties and stuff like that, that's generally what we do, you bring your own drinks to the college party. But a normal party, at least in my experience in the US, people provide drinks too. Another example of when culture gets uh, misinterpreted. So you have two verbs, mojer and matar. Mojer means to die, matar means to kill. The past tense of both of these is muerto. You don't know if you're talking about the person that died or if the person that did the killing. So context is important with this one. And I've mentioned in other videos that Brazilian Portuguese is very vowel-y, and I have two sentences that are just vowel -y that I want to share with you. Dar a capa a tapa. And this basically means like to give your face to be smacked, but I just thought it was cool because it has like 15 A's. And another one is vopolo no bolo, and that means I'm going to put it in the cake, but it's just a lot of O's. It's as fun as they say. Vopolo no bolo, the simple pleasures in life. So this is one thing that took me a second to get used to, plural versus singular when they have the same meaning. For example, todo o dia, todo dia, all day, every day, could also be o dia, todo, todos os dias. Both mean exactly the same thing. So this adjective lisa, which is a name in English, <laughs> uh, could also be liso if it's masculine. Uh, it could mean smooth, lisa means smooth, but then when you're referring to clothes or material, it could also mean blank. So un papel liso is a blank piece of paper. The, the paper could be rough and not smooth, but it would still be papel liso because it doesn't have any decorations on it, it's blank. Same thing with clothes, a plain shirt. Because I have this here, this is not uh, un camisa lisa, but if you touch it, it is camisa lisa. The verb ganar means to win or to earn, but then if you're talking about uh, presents, like if it's your birthday or Christmas, when you receive a present, you win that present. There is a word in Portuguese for when rain stops. It's estiar, the rain stops. A chuva estia. Actually, I don't even know if you have to say a chuva estia. You probably just say estia, and that means the rain stops. They have a word for this. Masa. Uh, this is a very interesting word because it also has some roots in Italy. Uh, it's a very popular word there. Uh, it's a family name. It also refers to dough of pizza. And then here in Brazil, it also refers to dough of pizza. It could also be any kind of noodles. And it also is slang for cool. Cadê. So you will hear this a lot. And it literally means where. So instead of saying, onde está meu carro? Where's my car? You can say, cadê meu carro? So you don't even need to use it with a verb. You can just say, it literally means where is or where are. And speaking of where, in Spanish you have donde está, and that's normally where is something. Regardless if it's moving or if it's fixed, it's always going to be donde está, except if you're talking about some sort of event um, or a concert or something like that, then you would use donde é, you'd use ser instead of estar. But in Brazilian Portuguese, onde é, ser, is for anything that doesn't move, so a house, a building, uh, even sometimes people who can use on GA, you can use ser, and esta is just for things that are temporary. So normally people or a car or something that will move around will use the verb estar instead of ser. In Brazilian Portuguese, you would use the verb tirar with foto if you want to take a picture, tirar foto. But you'd also use the same verb when you're talking about making a copy, like a photocopy, or here, tirar xerox. So to make a xerox, 
um, which nobody does anymore. I guess I'm old enough to know what that is, so I thought it was interesting. So like in Spanish, uh, Brazilian Portuguese has the fruit, and then a variation of that word would be the tree. So maçã is apple, and then maceira is the fruit tree. Banana is the fruit, bananeira is the tree. Uh, but what's interesting is that bananeira, maceira, coqueira, oliveira, in addition to all being trees, these are also popular last names here in Brazil. And I'm assuming it goes back to whatever their job was if they were picking these fruits. That became their last name. Bananeira also means handstand, in addition to being a tree and a last name. Emprego is work or a job. So empregado or empregada would be an employee. But if you're talking about in the context of a house and you have an empregada in your house, you have an employee in your house, but this is the word also for housekeeper. Chipo, the Brazilian go-to filler word. Chipo, vamos fazer isso, este chipo de chipo. They love this word chipo, but it also means type, it, literally. So in English, we'd say a third wheel, and in Portuguese, they would say somebody is securing the candle, or segurando vela. And again, again with the vowels, a vowel-y language, Portuguese is so vowel-y. You can make a whole sentence with just vowels. Oi, e aí? That means hi, what's up? There's just no consonants in that whole sentence. It was just a sentence of vowels, and that is a legit sentence. And so now the more that I'm learning Portuguese, the more I can pick up on the subtleties. And the verb estar, for example, would be conjugated esto, está, estamos, and estão. But in spoken Portuguese, it's gonna be to, ta, tamos, and tão. And so I came across this word office boy. That is the Brazilian word uh, for basically just like somebody who works in an office and does like all the mundane tasks that probably an intern would do nowadays. And this is a little bit of an archaic word, but when I did the translation in a, in a translator, the, in English, it was office boy. Never heard this word before. And so I was told, yeah, here in Brazil, nobody uses office boy anymore. They use moto boy. I'm like, what the heck is a moto boy? And basically it's the same thing. Just somebody who makes deliveries between places and uh, kind of just does like the basic tasks, but it's a job. It's not like a contractor or anything. It's just, that is their job. Pra caramba. So this is a synonym of gmais. Uh, which means too much. So just like I mentioned before, instead of putting it at the beginning of an adjective, you're gonna put it after. So if something is too big, it can be grandi pra caramba, ora achi. So this means like H hour is the translation, which I've never heard, but basically like a crucial moment, a critical moment. Uh, I would probably say crunch time if I were to translate it. Maybe even the moment of truth, ora achi. Okay, thanks for watching this video, and if you are into these same types of like silly, fun, linguistic observations, leave some in the comments below, share, it doesn't matter what language, I just, I think these are fun and interesting, and if you do too, let's share them with each other. If you wanna see more of this, definitely let me know as well. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully I see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. T-Max here, I make languages about languages, because I make the language, I create it myself, and then distribute it around the world so that nobody can learn it. But in Portuguese, uh, shoot, it's a storm.